As I aimlessly walk throughout the house looking for potato chips, I've been seeing some patterns instead. And I began to wonder if I could replicate some of these patterns in wood. I thought I could even add a three-dimensional appearance to them by using the contrasting colors of a variety of wood species. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to make a few end grain cutting boards while trying to mimic these patterns and designs. But this is just an experiment, so let's see if I can even do it. The first one will be a brick patterned board. This should be easy enough, just maple strips separated by thin walnut pieces that'll be the mortar. But I thought it might look neat if I could add this element throughout the piece to make it look like some of the bricks are missing. This also kind of creates a 3D element that allows you to see through the brick wall. Now my intention is to create all three of these pieces as end grain boards. This adds just a bit more complexity since I have to plan ahead so that once I turn the individual pieces on end, the design will reveal itself. I start off by picking out some rough sawn walnut, some maple, and a little bit of cherry. I hook up the planer and I put a smooth face on each piece. At the joiner, I run each piece over a few times to square up one of the edges. This makes cutting the individual strips down to width much easier on the table saw, since I can reference those square edges against the fence. I cut a ton of maple, which will make up the vast majority of the cutting board. I don't worry about their thickness just yet, but I do cut them to their final widths in this step. Next up is cutting a whole bunch of walnut to act as the mortar between each of the maple strips. And lastly, a couple pieces of cherry. Now for the missing brick illusion to work, I figured the edges should be mitered. The visible seam will kind of trick the eye into seeing depth, which should make it look a little three-dimensional. Either that, or else it'll all fail miserably and I'll have to cry myself to sleep tonight. So I guess we'll see. I used some painter's tape along the back edges of the two cherry pieces, and I made sure the seam was fastened together real tight. Once it was all bundled up, I could spread some glue, drop in the walnut piece, fold it all up, and tape it up securely to dry. This technique worked great. Sure, I use quite a bit of tape, but lucky for me, my neighbor keeps restocking his supply as the rolls disappear. Now I could start to glue up some of the main brick sections. I wanted them to vary in size so that I could add in the missing brick pieces in seemingly random locations throughout the board. Once my cherry and walnut section was completely dry, I could peel off the tape and then add that to the collection of the other pieces. A few trips through the planer gets them a little closer to their final thickness, and I'm sure to constantly be checking with the calipers to make sure I'm keeping everything even. I cut the missing brick piece to its final width on the table saw and then glue him onto one of the smaller sections of bricks from before. And once that's dry, I can pop him out of the clamps as well as get him down to his final thickness. At this point, I can grab my crosscut sled and begin to slice up each of the sections into pieces. Now the width that I'm cutting each of these pieces will determine the overall thickness of the board once it's all glued up. So I make it about 3 sixteenths of an inch larger than my desired thickness because I'll inevitably lose some material during the flattening process. Next up, I repeat the same process to glue up some walnut pieces. Slice them up, and then turn them on end to cut narrow strips to be the horizontal mortar lines in the brick wall. Now we're ready to start putting this thing together. First, I start by channeling my OCD and I sort all the pieces. Then I begin to lay them out in a pattern that looks pretty good. To actually glue them up, I started with the bottom and the top, and I kept adding rows of pieces and I figured I'd meet in the middle. At least, that was the plan. It's when I tried to join the two pieces together that I ran into a problem. Well, I went about making this the wrong way. I should have made longer strips instead of all the little pieces because when I started gluing it up, I couldn't keep them straight and I thought, I'll just press them into the parallel clamps and I'll make them straight. 
Um, you can't do that because, as you can see here, this completely cracked all the way down. Um, I ruined it. So I had to start over. Fortunately, I could salvage much of what I've already made. I ripped each horizontal row apart by cutting down the mortar lines. I planed off the remaining walnut and began to make complete strips by gluing up all the pieces together. Once they had dried, I could scrape off any squeeze out to keep them all perfectly flat. I had to make all new horizontal mortar strips, so I glued up some more walnut to take care of that. This time though, I made sure to make it long enough so that a single strip would span the entire width of the board. Alright, let's try this again. I plop all the pieces down, organize them the way that I want, and make some reference marks so that I can reassemble it correctly once the glue's been applied. Then I spread out all the pieces, and I used a glue roller to quickly and evenly apply a liberal coat across all of them. They all get placed back into the clamps, and I just line up the dots. I make some last minute adjustments to get everything looking good, and then I can tighten it down to dry. I used the CNC to flatten it on both sides, trimmed the sides off and I squared it up on the table saw, and gave it a good sanding. Then I used the CNC again to cut in a recess for a plate on the bottom, chamfered the edges, gave it one final sanding to 220 grit, drilled some holes for some rubber feet, and then I can oil it up with a mixture of beeswax and mineral oil. This is just a way to condition the wood and to keep it from drying out and fading. Plus it adds a bit of protection by making it water resistant and it keeps the pores of the wood from being filled up with bacteria. And when a gang of angry beavers breaks into my house and chews up all my cutting boards, they won't get sick because it's all food safe. Now well, there it is. It turned out kind of neat. The little missing brick sections give a cool 3D effect, and it definitely does add some depth to the board. Alright, on to the next one. For this one, I wanted to see if I could replicate the 3D pyramid looking pattern from the weird pieces of wall art that I have hanging in my house. Basically, I'm thinking I just need to make these square blocks and then stick them together. It looks like I'll need four different sequences of various woods. I'll cut them with 45 degree sides, and glue them all together. Seems easy enough, right? So I start off by resawing some walnut pretty thin on the bandsaw. I do the same thing with some maple, and then to get rid of the bandsaw marks, I need to run them through the planer. But they're so thin that I decide to temporarily glue them down onto a sled because the cutter head in the planer only goes so low. I check the thickness after each pass, and once I get them to where they need to be, I can prime off the sled. Now to make some cherry pieces. This piece ended up getting resawed a few times to give me four thin slats. The various pieces got trimmed down on the table saw, and then I was ready to make some sandwiches. Mmm, sandwiches. They each start with a slice of whole wheat walnut. Then a healthy piece of thick deli cut cherry on all of them. Some thinly sliced maple on two and walnut on the others. And lastly, top them off with some unpasteurized grass fed free range organic chunks of walnut, cherry and maple. I spread some glue on each layer and then just sort of eyeballed them to get them centered. Once I had the full sandwich made, I could gently slide it off the edge of the bench and get some clamps on it. And I repeated this until I had all of them clamped up to dry. The next day, I could pop off all the clamps. At this point, I could put a clean edge on the end and strike a line where the first cut needs to go. I tilt the blade to exactly 45 degrees and then I slide each of the sandwiches through. Now here's the tricky bit. How do you accurately make the second cut? I settled on the idea of using a 45 degree support piece that I would temporarily glue on with some craft adhesive. I was able to slide it through the cut with it being fully supported and glued so that it wouldn't move or shift. I was worried it wouldn't feel solid or be safe, but it actually worked quite well. 
Once I had all four pieces cut, I could test to see how they fit together. Hmm, it's pretty close, but it's not perfect. I decided to glue it up anyway, and to see if I could make it work. To do that, I just used some painter's tape on the seams like I did on the previous board. When I had three of the seams secured tightly with tape, I could lay it down flat on the bench and saturate it all with glue. And when I had an even coat spread across all the surfaces, I just rolled it up like a burrito. A few more pieces of tape held it closed, but I saw that it still had a gap so big that it could sell overpriced trendy clothes. So I got out a couple band clamps and I squeezed it as tight as Al Borland wearing skinny jeans. The next day, it had completely dried so I could peel off the tape and chop it up into blocks over at the miter saw. And it was at this point when I realized there was a problem. Well, that didn't work. Um, I just cut all these up to see how the seams look and they are horrible. Not only are they riddled with huge gaps like this, but in some places, they don't even line up here in the center. Let me show you. I can get focused in there. Look at that. They don't even line up. So I'm going to have to redo these. And I think I know exactly how to do it this time so that the, it'll end up perfect. Um, but got to start over. So this time, instead of trying to make the full length 45 degree cut on the table saw, I'll just chop them up first. Then using my crosscut sled and a 45 degree fence, I can put the first edge on each piece. And I used a finished one to line up and trace where the other cut needs to be and then I carefully sneak up on that line by nibbling away at the piece and test fitting it after each cut. Once I had them all cut, I could lay them out and see how it's going to look. Now for glue up. I mugged the local paper boy and I stole all of his rubber bands. I used them to stretch over and hold the glued pieces together while I got some clamps ready. I made tiny adjustments to get them lined up just right and then I could carefully and evenly use squeeze clamps to apply just a bit more pressure and close up any gaps. Once the individual blocks were dry, I could glue them up into rows. After that, I could put clean edges on them by taking very shallow passes on the jointer. I added some accent lines and a thicker walnut border and I glued up the whole piece. It gets flattened on the CNC, sanded for a year, a small round over, a plate recess, and then some oil and wax. Man, this one turned out awesome. The little pyramids really do look three-dimensional. Plus, I really like just how big this board turned out being. I popped on some rubber feet and this one was done. Yep, I like it. And I'm pretty pleased with how well things lined up in the end. I honestly didn't want to start over, but I'm glad I did. It really seems like I could run my hand over it and feel the tips of the pyramids. The illusion is pretty cool. All right, next. Now this one ought to be interesting. I got this idea from a hexagonal rattan woven basket. I started by laying out the pattern in Fusion, but I needed to figure out how to make it an end grain board. So I sliced it up and I determined that it's basically made up of just two pieces. This walnut and cherry piece which makes up the top row, and then all the pieces that make up the tops and the bottoms of each hex are actually the exact same piece. But to pull this off, I'll need four different colored woods. So let's get milling. I start off by planing down some cherry and some walnut and then I can put a square edge on the boards over at the joiner. Since all these pieces work around the hexagon shape, I need to set my table saw to exactly 60 degrees. And once I have it set perfectly, I can begin to cut down the walnut pieces into several strips. And then I do the same thing with the cherry as well.
Now I can glue them all up. Since parallelograms like to slide around in the clamps, and since I'm a genius, I knew that I had to use some calling boards to hold everything coplanar. But in all my geniusness, I failed to realize that the panel I was making was way too big for my planer, so I had to cut it in half as soon as it had dried. I'm such a genius. I planed down both halves of the panel to smooth them out, and then I could slice it up on the table saw. Now I could take a piece from each side of the panel and glue them back together. I just clamped down the first one, I spread some glue, and then I pushed the second one into it and then clamped it down as well. It took a while, but it gave me some time to contemplate my life choices. And once they were dry, I could run them through the planer one last time to get them down to their final thickness and then set them off to the side. Now it's time to make the other pieces. I start by cutting off a piece from my neighbor's piano. I mean, from this Paduk board that I legally purchased. It gets resawed in half over at the bandsaw. And then at the table saw, I could proceed to cut it down into a series of strips. Next, I do all the same things for some maple and some cherry. Now to clamp these up. I figured it would help if I used some of the cutoffs to give me square edges along with some calling boards to hold everything flat. So I glued up all the pieces, clamped them up tight, and I set them off to dry. And I had to repeat this seven more times. After they were dry, I could joint one side flat and then run them all through the planer and get them to their final thickness. Now I cut each piece so that the cherry was a perfect triangle. And then I added the second cut to the maple to create half of a hexagon. Once they were done, I could slice them all up into a zillion little pieces. And now I needed to glue all these pieces together to form strips. This took a while, but it gave me some time to ponder some of life's strange facts. Like, is it weird that the object of golf is to play the least amount of golf? I thought so. Once the strips were dry, I could slide off the clamps and then pop it off the bench. And now we're ready for the final glue up. I ran a bead of glue down each strip and I lined it up as best as I could to its neighboring piece. Once I closed up the clamps, I made some last minute adjustments to get it as good as possible and then I tightened it up and added a few more clamps. The next day I could pop it out and take it over to the CNC for some flattening. I trimmed off the sides at the table saw sanded for an eternity, cut a plate recess, gave it the chamfer treatment, did some final edge sanding, drilled some holes for some feet, and threw on some finish. Man, this one turned out cool. From a distance. I'm calling this the 10 yarder. It's good from far, but if you get up close and inspect the seams, it's far from good. Some of the pieces don't quite line up, and since I made it, it's all I'll ever see. But it was a learning experience. I know how I could have made it better, so if I ever do make it again, it'll be perfect. But overall, I do like this one. It's pretty cool. So which one do you like the most? The missing brick board? The pyramid board? Or the hex weave one? Let me know down in the comments. If you're up to the challenge and you'd like to try making one of these patterns for yourself, I have detailed step-by-step -step plans available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. I sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. And if you'd like to support Fisher's Shop, a really good way to do that is to become a channel member. There should be a join button on your player. 
You can get early access to videos and badges and other perks too, so check it out. I'd be very grateful if you did. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. I'm gonna use that clip. Were you recording? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Crap. Shoot. God darn it. Not even close. That whole thing shifted when it went down again. I have to recode this CNC job so that that bit gently ramps in because that moved the whole cutting board. Oh, that's not good. Phew. Now I only have to do that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more times. Oh my gosh.